good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Ardabil in Iran, which we're in the very north of Iran here, so you can't really see Iran written here on the map. Um, this you can see is the Caspian Sea. But Ardabil actually does not border it. It does border this very lush Iraqi region around the Caspian Sea, though. You'll see more of the difference on Google Earth. It's a very stark contrast. This is all green and lush. This is all very barren and rocky. But that doesn't mean it's not an interesting little area. This region borders Azerbaijan, you can see here, which is very, very important to its history because Ardabil is part of a very different region of Iran. You can see here it says Azerbaijan, but this is Azerbaijan. This is Azerbaijan. So why does this say Azerbaijan? Well, we'll talk more about it in its history, but just note for now that this region is mainly populated by Azeri peoples and they speak the Azeri language not well, I'm sure they speak Farsi but most of Iran speaks Farsi here they speak Azeri you can see the capital here, Artabil and there are some very interesting geographic features in this region the first one I want to mention is around here, and these are the Sabalon Mountains. You can see Mount Sabalon right here. It's a huge dormant volcano, and it's very beautiful. The crater's filled up with water, making a little crater lake. It's so pretty. But this is also important to its history. Also, because this area has a history of volcanic activity, there's some hot springs in the area here, which apparently is why many Iranians come from the south here to bathe in its healing waters, taking advantage of those healing properties. There's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Ardabil, but I think I'm going to wait until the history portion to bring it up, because it'll make more sense of it. Hang on tight, and let's talk about its history and why this area is known as Azerbaijan. What's happening there? You can see here's, here's East Azerbaijan and West Azerbaijan, and then there's Ardabil. These are the three regions of Iranian Azerbaijan. So, first of all, let's talk about Mount Sabalan and why it's important, not just to the history of the region, but the history of Iran. Because this is where, once long, long ago, a man named Zoroaster came to focus and think and write down a, a, a suppose a book, you would call it, a tenant, a gospel, I'm not sure how to describe it, the Avesta, which is kind of the holy scriptures, the religion of Zoroastrianism, a religion that he founded, which uh, for its time was very different because there was one god that was worshipped. There were two gods, one of good, one of evil. They obviously worshipped the good one, which was a very different concept at that time of paganism, you know, multiple deities, multiple pantheons. I just think it's neat that it was written in these mountains. It spread all throughout Persia and was the dominant religion of ancient Persia for a long time until um, the Arabs came which apparently nothing else really happened in this corner of the world that we know of until the Arabs came. So we're going to skip to that region, that region, that era. We know before then it was conquered by the Sassanids, by the 400s, the Sassanids being the Persian Empire that sprung up after Alexander the Great waged war in this area. And 
obviously the Arabs brought Islam with them. That's an obvious statement. I don't need to really say that every time, but it's very important. The region here was attacked frequently by peoples here to the north from the Caucasian mountains along with the Khazars, which are much more further north from there, the Turkic people. But that didn't compare to the Mongols. When the Mongols came through in 1220 and sacked the city and, you know, decimated the region, it slowly built itself back up. It was conquered again, though, by the Ottomans in 1514. Not conquered, I should say. It was attacked. It remained under Persian control for a long time. They would attack again in 1722. They would attack during World War I, and the Russians would come in and attack in the 1800s, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to slow down. It was between this time in the 16th century or so that a large Sufi movement came in to Ardabil. And that's what we're going to talk about our UNESCO World Heritage Site. So let me grab my tablet. Sufism is a sect of Islam that I don't really know much about because each sect is vastly different from the other, from what I can tell. But it's always described as being a mystical Islam, right? So we are going to look at the Sheikh Safi al-Din Kanaga and Shrine Ensemble in Ardabil. Make sure you can see that. Okay. Built between the beginning of the 16th century and the end of the 18th century, this place of spiritual retreat in the Sufi tradition uses Iranian traditional architectural forms to maximize use of available space to accommodate a variety of functions, including a library, a mosque, a school, a mausolea, a cistern, a hospital, kitchens, a bakery, and some offices. It incorporates a route to reach the shrine of the sheikh divided into seven segments, which mirror the seven stages of Sufi mysticism, separated by eight gates, which represent the eight attitudes of Sufism. The ensemble includes well-preserved and richly ornamented facades and interiors, with a remarkable collection of antique artifacts. It constitutes a rare ensemble of elements of medieval Islamic architecture. So yeah, the, the head of this sect, when he passed away, of Sheikh Safi Adin Ardabili, he's known as, um, when he passed away, they built this beautiful mausoleum for him, and this gorgeous, I guess, temple complex, which has these beautiful domed entrances, lots of beautiful arches, beautiful ceilings. We'll take a look at all of these on Google Earth. And just absolutely remarkable details in this building. I know I say that for a lot of beautiful mosques and any kind of religious building, but this one is on a whole other level. They went above and beyond decorating every single inch of this place. So, like I said, the Russians first attacked in the early 1800s um, until Napoleon became a thing and they had to go deal with that. Uh, they would be back, though, in the 1820s, when they would wage another war with Persia, mainly over territory, who would get to control what. They attacked the city in 1828, and they raided the library in that shrine complex, and apparently said that they were going to take it to Moscow and save, every, like, rewrite, copy everything, and bring it back, and they never Imperial Russia. Don't ever... They, they always lie. <laughs> Don't listen to those czars up there. So, once the dust settled from that conflict, they decided once and for all they're going to draw a line between what area is going to belong to Russia and what area is going to belong to Persia. And that line went right through here. So, there were Azeri people 
living all over here, right? And pretty much a line was drawn right through their area. So all the Azeris living north of this line became Russian citizens, and all the Azeris living south officially became Persians. And I mean, not the worst thing if you're living down here, because the Azeris are also Muslim. Um, a little different if you're up north with the Russians, because they were Orthodox Christians, right? But, Azerbaijan was split in two, and technically still is to this day. So that is why this area is known as Azerbaijan, because all of this used to be Azerbaijan once upon a time. Now there are two, with two different histories nowadays, huh? Let's talk about that. Oh yeah, Russia also came in over the border, um, invading all of this, um, I guess Persian Azerbaijan it would have been then. In the 1910s, Iran, or Iran, Persia was going through a constitutional revolution, which is how they wound up getting a parliament and all of that. Uh, but Russia saw that its territory was in danger and they occupied. And uh, they backed out in 1917 because there were much, much bigger things happening in Russia at that time didn't have time for any of this nonsense. They all pulled out. And nowadays, of course, now it is Iran, officially. No longer Persia, although... I shouldn't talk... Not that I shouldn't talk about that, it hasn't anything to do with the video. How there's still, like, Persian culture and all of that. There's still Persian people. It's just called Iran now. <laughs> but not up here. This is still very Azeri. This region is very famous for Azeri rugs and Azeri carpets. You can come to Ardabil and get authentic Azeri carpets without having to go all the way to Baku or anything like that. The only other historical thing I found was a huge earthquake that happened in 1997. It was a 6.1, but on the Mercalli scale, which is I assume, from what I've read, the more acceptable scale to use nowadays, which doesn't measure the magnitude of the earthquake, it me measures the destruction that's caused by the earthquake. Um, it goes up to a 12. This was an 8 on the Mercalli scale. So, like, like, you could have a tiny, tiny earthquake, but if it's in a region that's not prepared, destroys the area, so it could be a tiny magnitude, huge, on the Mercalli scale. It's it's just a way to, to to measure the damage caused by the earthquakes. If you didn't know, now you know. But the area rebuilt itself, and it's beautiful and wonderful nowadays. I think we should go check it out on Google Earth. What about you? Let me turn off the lights and grab my tablet. So here we are. Ardeville province. Let's zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. If you've never heard of Azerbaijan, uh, oops, I thought it moved. There you go. Let's zoom out first before we look at the thing. So here is Iran, rest of the Middle East, uh, Central Asia, and there's the Caucasus region up here. We can see Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. And then there's Ardeville province. The slideshow is making good. There are some really interesting bridges crossing the river here. It's the Aras River, but it's called uh, something else in Iran. I forget. Some of the hot springs there look so relaxing. And the snowy lodges. This is also apparently the coldest province. Province? Province. Yeah. In Iran it's below freezing, which means lots of good skiing, apparently, when it's very cold. Beautiful mountain waterfall there. Got a spring there. Lots of little flowers, little thistles and daisies. Pretty mountain. And look at this, little angels. Something that you don't often see 
in, um, especially a Shia culture, right? It's because it's a ceremony, it's like a rite. Very interesting. beautiful spring there, fountain, big lake there that you can have too. So let's start by looking at Ardabil itself. You can see right off the bat that there's a huge lake here. According to this, the tourism complex is underwater. <laughs> but I was reading, also shout out to um, the various Iranian tourism websites. I found that Middle East and the Caribbean have the best tourist websites. Um, they're talking about how this lake has a lot of interesting mineral properties and people come here. Is that a slideshow I wanted to see? It's my bad. Maybe not. No, it's not. People come to this lake in particular, or this one, Shorabil to wash in the water, since I'm sure it must be freezing cold, but I guess the mineral compound of this lake here is not very typical, and it's very healing, I suppose, as are many of the waters in this region. It's a very pretty, beautiful, beautiful lake. You can see the mountains there in the distance, and lots of beautiful poppies. We're gonna look. Let's see if I can find it. The city's so cool from above. Over here. This is the complex they were talking about. You can see um, all of the white roofs, and then you have all of this tan. It is the ancient complex. Now, one second, because a really good slideshow popped up. Here's Chile's too. Um, let's see, shrine, there we go. This is a great slideshow. The one that you tap on that pops up here is fine, but this one is beautiful. So here's the entrance you can see, all geometric and lovely. Then we get to see the beautiful facades here, what a gorgeous blue color there. And just all sorts of details on the outside. So I wonder, oh my goodness, my tablet just turned off and that terrified me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's the new cover I got, anyway. Um, I wonder if this was part of the library, because these look like little enclaves for books, right? But maybe not. Maybe it's just a beautiful, I think this might be the, maybe it's a corner that faces Mecca? Because I'll show you in other slideshows. It's a beautiful window. It's so ornate. Look at it from a distance. Look how incredible. All the carpets here. All of the little arches. And the, of course the ceilings are just out of this world. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, there's the guy himself. There's his tomb. Beautiful pottery there. So, so intricate. Look at these corners here. How fascinating. So yeah, you see why I think that this is maybe... No, because that's not the main one. There's no window. Like, I wonder if that corner faces Mecca. I do not know. I do not know that. But of these positions, and look how gorgeous this is. It's so lovingly crafted. And here's a giant carpet. I'm sure this carpet has a great significance because it has its own dome and everything. Minarets there. Another famous uh, Sufi, I would assume. Kind of looks like Einstein. But yeah, what a spectacularly gorgeous building. So, so beautiful. You see why it's been preserved by UNESCO. Now, as it said on UNESCO's website, this is a complex with lots of little structures inside, and sadly, they don't have slideshows that I found, except for one. And it's over here. Let's see if it pops up. This one. This is an Imamzada, which apparently in Shia Islam is a, 
a sh like a memorial shrine for an imam, for a Shia imam. And I assume this is it. But this is also a gorgeous little building here, tucked away in the complex. Look at the gorgeous carpets, and there's a throne. How fascinating. I tried to find information about this one in particular, but you type in Imam Zala and um, a bunch of different ones in Iran pop up. Not this one, though. But we have to assume there's a very important person enshrined in here. I'm sure this talks all about it, but it's in Arabic. Look at the beautiful carpets all in this little throne room here. So pretty. This guy thinks it's interesting. This kid is brave enough to touch it. I don't know if I would be. I would be too nervous to touch an area where someone is entombed, right? But very, very beautiful. Now, sadly, all the other little structures here don't have slideshows. Look at this beautiful courtyard here. Nothing. It's so unfortunate. So I'm going to go here and take pictures for Google. Oh, and there's also a cool museum over here. Artabil Anthropology Museum. Look at this ancient bath here, this old hammam. So cool. And they've got little figures here showing you how people once lived. They've got a beautiful dome there, this old ancient bath. You can see lots of artifacts being shown by these mannequins. How people used to dress and how they used to live here. What kind of merchant, right? All kinds of pots and pans and things. Another very beautiful. This looks like all it's brick. How incredible. That's all brick. That's very, very impressive. A little mule there. Just the bros washing each other like bros do. <laughs> Look at these ancient muskets. They are rifles. I'm not a gun person, obviously. But fascinating. I've never seen them look like that. And look at these. So I was reading about these stones that were found carved by the Sassanids, and I couldn't find anything about it until I found this slideshow. I think these are them. Obviously there's a picture of what they're out in the wilderness looking like, but here's some of them. I think this is what they were talking about. It's so cool. There's an old map here of the city. I didn't mention it was founded, or believed to be founded, because we don't really know, in the 300s these trinkets, little pocket watches, alarm clocks. How fun. I was about to say that looks like an old Nintendo, but it's obviously not. It'll be in a museum someday, but not quite yet. Beautiful pipes, you think? Look at that. Oh, it's a whopper. But yeah, what a neat little museum. The pretty flowers there, and the beautiful courtyard, and lovely light. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Moving out of the city. Oh, I have to show you the mountain. Actually, we're going to close out on the mountain. I want to show you this other slideshow down here. Kui Ardag. I know dog in Azeri means mountain. I don't know about Persian. But this is gorgeous. Look at how lush these fields are and how snow capped the mountains are. And you can hike up. Oh, it's so pristine. So pretty. Not a lot of slideshows in the south of Ardabil province, but this one's pretty great. Look at that. It's so nice. Beautiful rolling hills here, so colorful. Beautiful wildflower areas. And the little town. Oh, so bright and white. So nice. Beautiful valleys above the clouds. This guy's very unimpressed with this waterfall. This guy's very unimpressed with this river. <laughs> the aliens are also unimpressed. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, nice little slideshow there. That kind of sums up this Rocky Mountainous area. Oh, I meant to show you. Look at the difference here between the Caspian coast, all lush and green. And then there's Art of the Province. Just you can actually see where the province ends and begins. Let's go look at the mountain. It's been 3D already. Check it out. It's 
pretty big. Big old extinct volcano. Oop, come back. This ledge is pretty good. It's very tough. So it looks like in the slideshow there's hiking excursions up to this beautiful crater lake here. Which is probably the coldest, clearest water you could find anywhere, right? Lots of cool old volcanic rocks up here, too. A place to park your car, who cares? Looks like there's a little mosque there, too. You can pray up on the mountains. And yeah, it free oop, it freezes over sometimes. It's very, very neat. And yeah, you can come hike up this gorgeous mountain. all the cool rock formations, a little burst of wild flowers there, the sunflower there. Yeah, I think that that's the frozen lake. <laughs> I don't know if I'd rather see this lake all like shimmery beautiful in the summer or all frozen over in the winter because it's both so beautiful. Look at that. Wow. From above, In my dream house, a little yurt guy, except that it looks like it's made out of stone. It looks like a stone yurt or a little gym. In the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere, just lush and free and wonderful. That's my kind of life. Let me pull up one more slideshow while we close this up. Let's see what this is. Oh, this is some more cool rocks. Look at that. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we're going to be going to Turkey. And uh, I know I have a lot of Turkish viewers out there, and you're all very enthusiastic, <laughs> like this guy, uh, this video about Turkey. So, um, and they always leave really kind comments, too. So, um, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. I hope that you have a good, good night.